What is going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to State 48 Turtle and Tortoise. I am Hayden and today as you guys saw in the thumbnail and title we're gonna find out what happens when you take an albino to an ivory tortoise. Not gonna spoil it yet but I've got my trusty dusty whiteboard out here in my makeshift workshop. You guys are gonna see in the next video that this enclosure I'm standing in is gonna be done. So um, I've been working hard on this. Gonna get it done in the next video but guys Without further ado, I'm going to get this camera set up, get the dry erase marker out, and I'm going to start showing you guys a little bit of turtle and tortoise genetics, focusing on the albino and ivory sulcata tortoises. Stick along, because we're about to get into it. Alrighty, guys. So what we're going to talk about first, I've got three tortoises here on the ground. Hopefully, uh, you guys can see everything good. But what we've got is we've got albino sulcata and an ivory sulcata. Talking about genetics, albino sulcatus, as we have here, this yearling albino, is a recessive genetic mutation. I'm gonna show you guys what happens, a couple different scenarios. Do you guys ever remember Punnett squares? And I've done a video on this in the past. Punnett squares from whenever you were in, whoops, uh, um, biology in high school, you have a Punnett square. So for example, a lot of the tortoises we breed here are albino, which will represent by Little a, little a, but we actually breed them to a pet tortoise, which is represented this way. It's a normal looking tortoise, capital A, and I'm gonna do a quick refresher on this to little a means they're carrying the het tortoise. So I'm gonna write this out real quick to kind of help you guys out. We've got A, A is gonna be normal. This marker is not as good as I hoped. We have A, a, which is pet albino. And then we have A, A, which is visual albino. So what we've got here is a big A, little a, that means het, and little a, little a means albino. Let me show you guys what this does. We take the A to the A, A to the A, take A and A, what that means is we're going to get half are going to be pet albino and the other half are going to be albino, which is mostly the production we do here at State 48 Turtle and Tortoise. And that produces half our babies are albinos and half end up being heterozygous for albino, meaning they could produce albino babies, but they look completely normal. It's going to be the same thing with an ivory tortoise, which here. We've got a gorgeous ivory tortoise. Uh, this one's probably a couple years old. I just picked this one up recently. Um, but an ivory tortoise, which they consider a uh, T positive, tyrosine positive albino. Um, pretty unique, definitely looks different than a normal sulcata, which you can see here, although this tortoise is not normal, but you can see the visual difference on each of these tortoises. What we're gonna get into now, genetically speaking, is People constantly ask me, what happens if you breed an ivory tortoise and an albino tortoise? Well, it's gonna get a little complicated. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take little i, little i for ivory. So what happens if we take Punnett square? We're not gonna get too complicated into this. But what happens if we take an ivory to an albino? Well, we're gonna get little a, little i, meaning albino ivory. But what does that tortoise look like? They're all gonna be the same exact baby, but that baby is gonna look exactly like a normal sulcata. Nothing different, nothing special. A normal looking sulcata tortoise. I had to make sure my camera was still recording because I didn't want to do this whole video and have problems. So, this gets a little bit more complicated, but because it is technically a double recessive, it gets a little more complicated. So now this chart for bringing in several genes actually gets much much bigger and the reason for that being 
we have to account for this tortoise's normal genetics, but also the fact that it carries albino and ivory genetics. It's gonna get really, really complicated, but let me go ahead and help you here. Because now that it's a het for albino, you've got that there. And now that it's an ivory, which is going to be big eye, little eye, big eye, little eye, big A, little A, big A, little A. It doesn't matter what order you write these in, but it's got copies of everything. Basically what this is going to mean, and I know I'm not drawing this Punnett square correctly, but this is the only square that matters. Because what we're going to produce by breeding this tortoise is we need to breed this tortoise to one other tortoise that carries all the exact same genetics. So again, this tortoise here. All right, so of course, filming here in Arizona, everything overheats and it drives me crazy. But guys, what we got here is this tortoise here is a normal looking tortoise that's het for ivory and het for albino. So what happens when we breed two of these tortoises together? And I didn't draw this right, I know that, but for sake of the video, this tortoise, bred with this tortoise, is always gonna create normal looking tortoises that actually carry both genes. What that's gonna produce over here when you breed two of these tortoises together is that's going to produce, sorry, I'm trying to get my camera lined up here because my phone overheated. Um, that's gonna produce a bunch of albinos, well, part albinos, part ivories, some of them are gonna be het for albino, some of them are gonna be het for ivory, some are gonna be normal. It just creates an entire mixed bag of what you get, but you do get breeding two of these together, some albinos, some ivories, and then you will have a small chance of ending up with normal tortoises as well, I believe. But this is what we're looking for, the one in 16th chance. That means one, when you breed a het for albino and ivory, right? The combination of these two produces this normal tortoise. When you breed two of these tortoises together that carry both genes, one out of every 16 babies should in theory be a new morph. We don't know what that morph is, but it's gonna be a double visual ivory albino. Nobody's done it yet. There's a lot of people on the cusp of doing it. Arizona sulcata produced this tortoise um, and has produced double het tortoises by breeding adult albino female to an ivory male adult and produced a whole bunch of normal babies the past couple years. So a lot of people are on the cusp of producing this, but we don't know what it's gonna look like. Some people say, oh, it could, could be a, it could be a, uh, a blue-eyed leucistic, you know, no one really knows, but that's what happens when you breed an ivory and an albino together. There's not a lot of benefit to doing it now because there's so many of these hets already out here. So I wouldn't suggest going and taking an ivory and albino and breeding them together. There's not gonna be a lot of value out of it now because again, Arizona Socata has done a great job at producing a lot of these heterozygous tortoises that carry both genes already. So you'd be kind of late to the game if you went and bred these two together. So the goal is to get these het for albino ivories, the double hets, breed them together and create that new morph. We don't know what it's gonna look like. We have no idea. Um, I don't think it's gonna be anything crazy to be honest with you, just based on what you see in tr other turtles, other snakes, things like that when you breed a T positive, T negative together. It's nothing crazy, but it's exciting nonetheless. It'll be something new. And the benefit will be that when you do it, if you got that double visual animal, which we don't have, and you put it with an albino, all the babies will be albinos. If you put that double visual animal with an ivory, all the babies will be ivories. It just creates a fun opportunity for something new. This is kind of real quick, simple genetics. I know I've done it in the past. It's Punnett squares. I'll probably put the link to that other video down in the bottom, but this is quick and simple math. I didn't write these out right. I know, don't get on me people, but this is what we're looking for. That one in 16th chance to create that new morph, the double visual albino ivory. So hopefully in about two to four years, we're gonna see somebody breeding them, whether it's me with my group, if they actually end up being double heads. Yeah, my phone will read it like three times trying to film this video and it's like three in the afternoon and I'm in the shade. But that's Arizona for you guys. I'm gonna stop complaining about it, I promise. So hopefully it cools down soon. But like I was saying, hopefully somebody produces this, this new double visual albino ivory sometime in the next two to four years. Um, hopefully it works out with the tortoises I have. I saw the paperwork on them, crossing my fingers, they're legit. But anywho, nonetheless, I'll take the gamble. It's just a couple extra tortoises to keep around anyways. But I appreciate you guys. Sorry for this short video, but I just want to answer a question that people ask me all the time. What happens with an ivory and an albino? But guys, I appreciate you stopping by. I appreciate you watching this video. Um, you guys have a wonderful, wonderful day. And I will see you guys very, very soon with a new video. Peace.